in the last section, we added on our form tag right here, and we gave it a child of a column, and the column is going to show some number of children inside of it. Remember, the column is here just to lay out widgets on the screen. That's the sole purpose of the column widget. So now inside this children array, we can create our two form text fields and our raised button as well. Now we could definitely add in all these widgets directly to this children array or children list right here. You know, we could do something like uh, raised button and then pass in a ton of configuration to this thing. But that's going to make this children list right here be very hard to read if we try to stick in a lot of stuff on there. So rather than adding in every one of these child widgets directly to children, I'm going to instead make a couple of helper methods inside of our login screen state class. And each of these helper methods are going to produce either the text form field for the email, the text form field for the password, or the raised button for the submit button. So inside of my class, I'm going to go down to the very bottom while still inside of the final closing bracket for the class, and I'm going to add in three helper methods. The first one I'm going to call email field. I'll call the second one password field. And then finally, I will also add in submit button. So again, the idea here is that each of these helper methods are going to create the respective field or the button and then simply return them. So all we're doing here is keeping this build method a little bit easier to read by not sticking this huge kind of pyramid of doom of all these nested widgets inside of here. So now as the, in the child children list right here, I'm going to call email field for the first argument, first element inside there, excuse me. Then I'll put down my password field. And then finally, the submit button as well. OK, so now each of these can return a widget themselves. And we get to put all the logic tied to them into these separate methods. Let's make sure that we mark each of these methods with a return type as well, just so it's really clear that, yeah, the email field is going to return a widget that can be shown on the screen. So I'm going to mark this as a widget a widget, and a widget as well. OK, so that's good progress. Now we'll get started immediately with our email field. For this, I'm going to very quickly bring up the documentation for a text form field, and we'll get a better idea of how they work. So back inside of my browser, remember we can access our documentation by going to flutter.io slash widgets. And that will open up the widget catalog. So inside of here, we can either try to hunt and peck inside of all these lists, or we can just do a search from the top right hand. And so I want to just directly look up that text form field widget. And then we're looking for the text form field class right here. All right, so if you want to, you could certainly take a quick glance at the documentation text here. You'll notice that it says in the first couple of paragraphs something about if we have a form widget, it makes it really easy to save, reset, or validate multiple fields at once. So that's what we're trying to do. We are trying to use a form widget to manage the email input and the password input as well. So as usual, we're going to go down to this thing's constructor, and we'll get a better idea of what we can pass to it. So here's our text form field and all the different properties that we can pass to the constructor. Now there's going to be a couple of ones that you and I are going to really care about. I'm going to point them out as I can kind of find them in here. So the first one that we're going to really care about is input decoration prop right here. So input decoration is how we're going to specify a label to be displayed above the actual input. So remember, as I mentioned earlier, when we show a text form field, it encapsulates not just the input itself, but also the label that is shown above it and any validation text that gets displayed underneath it as well. So by just showing a text form field, we get all three of these things for free automatically. In order to specify the label that we want to be have shown above, we're going to use that decoration right here. So this name property of decoration. Let's add this on first and get a better idea of just how to add in a text input, or excuse me, a label above the text input. Okay, so back over here, 
we're going to start first with the email field. So I'm going to return a text form field. And for right now, the only named property that I want to pass in here is that decoration thing. So decoration is supposed to be of type input decoration. So let's look at the documentation on that very quickly. All right, so here's the input decoration class. This is what we use to customize the borders, labels, and all other stuff around text fields. So you can kind of think of input decoration class as modifying the way that these input fields appear on the screen of the device. If we go down a little bit, as usual, we'll look at our constructor right here. So a couple of the properties that you and I really care about are things like label text. So that's going to specify the label that gets shown above the actual input. And then there's also something on here called hint text as well. The hint text right here, you can kind of think of as being like a placeholder of sorts. So kind of some temporary value that will appear to be in the input to kind of guide the user and give them a better idea of what type of input they're supposed to add. So let's try creating a new input decoration and specifying the label text and the hint text as well. All right, so back over here, here's the decoration. I'm gonna make a input decoration don't forget to get the comma at the end there. And then we're going to specify a, about a label text first. So the label that I want to show on the screen, something like email. Yeah, we could probably do a little bit better than that. Let's do something like email address. And then as the hint text, and again, that's kind of like our placeholder, I'll enter something like you at example.com. So again, this is just going to guide our user and make it obvious that, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do like my email name at domain.com or wherever my email address might be hosted at. Okay, so let's save this and we're going to test it out in our simulator. Before we test it out, you'll notice that whenever we call password field right now and submit button, they are not currently returning any widget whatsoever. So if we ran this code as is, we would probably see an error message complaining that password field and submit button are not returning anything. So to make sure that we don't call those methods, I'm gonna go back up to where we added them to this children property on the column. And I'm just gonna very temporarily comment those two out. So as soon as we implement both those methods, we will uncomment them. But for right now, only email field has functionality tied to it. Okay, so now I will get my termina terminal and simulator back up. I'll do my hard refresh with Shift R. And awesome. All right, so here is our default material text field widget. So you'll notice at the top, we have our label text of email address. We get the line to indicate that, hey, this is some place where you can type. I can click in here. And when I do, you'll see that placeholder type text or what's referred to as the hint text appear. So it says you at example.com. And again, this is just intended to kind of guide our users and help them understand what they're supposed to enter in here. So now I can start to type in whatever my input might be. All right, so that made some progress. We got our input on the screen and we got a label on there as well. So let's take a quick pause and we'll come back in the next section.